hello you're welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to be solving this equation now as mentioned here we were told that the solution of x and y they are positive integer solutions so we're going to focus the working on this positive integer solutions so what we need to do first is to have an assumption and let's say let this x here be greater than or equal to y that is going to be the first assumption we're going to have. Let x be greater than or equal to y. So you tell me, if x is greater than or equal to y, what would you say about 1 over x? Would this still be greater than or less than? Of course, it's going to be less than or equal to 1 over y. Now, here's why. 4 is obviously greater than 2, right? But what about if you have 1 over 4? it becomes less than 1 over 2 because 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 and 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. So 0 0.25 is clearly less than 0 0.5. So that's why we had to change this inequality from greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to. I just had to share this with you so you'll not get confused. Now let's continue. So because we have this inequality, we can say that 1 over 5, that's from here, 1 over 5 is clearly equal to 1 over x plus 1 over y from, from what we have in the question. So back to what I shared the other time when I said 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 2. If I decide to add 1 over 4 to 1 over 2, this will be less than 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So why am I even trying to do this? I'm trying to do this because I just want an inequality that has only one variable. So it's easy for me to solve and get the range of values for that variable. So if I want to rewrite this 1 over x plus 1 over y, in order for me to get an inequality in one variable, we can simply say that 1 over x plus 1 over y is going to be less than or equal to 1 over y plus 1 over y. Now here's why. Because 1 over y is greater than 1 over x, right? So if you take 1 over y, as we have in this case now, and add it to, uh, to itself, it's going to be greater than 1 over y added to a smaller value. So back to this now. If 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is what 1, right? And this is clearly greater than 0 0.25, that's 1 over 4, plus 0 0.5. This is 0 0.75 five right and of course it is less than one so as you can see now and i have an inequality that only has one variable which is exactly what i wanted okay so let's continue so the next thing is to write one over five is equal to one over x plus one over y less than or equal to if you add these two fractions you're going to get two over y right good and we cannot conclude by saying that two over y is greater than 1 over 5. Can you see now that we have an inequality that has one variable? So let's just write it and say that 2 over y is greater than or equal to 1 over 5. So let's get the range of values of x. We're going to solve this. So the first thing to do is to take the reciprocal of what I have here and what I have on the right hand side. Now, if you have an inequality and you take the reciprocal of both sides, the inequality will automatically change, just as we did initially when we started this video. So I'll say y over 2 is no longer greater than, is now less than or equal to 5 over 1. So because I need to get the range of values of y, I will multiply both sides by 2 here and by 2 here. So 2 cancels 2, and we have that y is less than, or equal to 5 times 2 is 10. So this means that x is less than or equal to 10. Okay, now let's go back to the original equation, this one now, and let's, let's make x the subject of the formula. So next page, so 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over 5. So we are going to transpose plus 1 over y to the right hand side. I'm going to have 1 over x is equal to 1 over 5 minus 1 over y. And 1 over x is equal to the LCM of 5 and y is 5y. 
5 goes into 5 where you have y. y times 1 is y. And 5 goes into 5 where you have 5. 5 times 1 is 5. So we're going to take the reciprocal of 1 over x. And of course, you do the same thing here. So you have x is equal to 5y over y minus 5. All right? But we can also do something. We can, we can write this as 5 times, this is times, y over y minus 5. Okay? Good. Now, we are also going to get another inequality because if y is less than or equal to 10, we don't know if the value of y will move down to 1. Let's see what is going to be the minimum value of y. Since we already have the maximum value of y, that's 10. Okay, so we can get it from this denominator, y minus 5. Because we know that x and y have to be positive, it means that if this right here is negative, then it will make all of this to be negative, and that will not satisfy the original intent by making x and y positive. So we can get another inequality from y minus 5 and say that y minus 5 will have to be greater than or equal to 1. Because if this is 1, then we are going to get a positive value. But if this is less than 1, it's going to make all of this a negative value. And that will not satisfy the condition that says that x and y have positive solutions. So it's easy now to solve this. I'm going to move minus 5 to the right hand side. So we have that y is greater than or equal to 1 plus 5 and y is greater than or equal to what? 6. So this is what we have now and we, we also know that y is less than or equal to 10 like we got earlier. So we combine this inequality, we're going to have that y is less than or equal to 10 but the same y is greater than or equal to 6. This is the range of values of x from 6 all the way up to 10 okay so we can write now that y is equal to 6 7 8 9 and 10 so we cannot get the corresponding values of x since we already know the values of y we have an equation where x is the subject of the formula see it here so we're going to use this to get the corresponding values of x x is equal to 5 times y over y minus 5 x is equal to 5 times y over y minus 5. So when y is equal to 6, let's get the value of x. So x will be equal to 5 times 6 over 6 minus 5, which is what? 5 times 6 over 6 minus 5 is 1. And 5 times 6 is what? 30. So I'm going to write here, here that x is equal to what? 30. When y is 6 okay now what about when y is 7 if you put 7 here you are going to have this 5 times 7 over 7 minus 5 now this is going to give us a fraction it will not give us a whole number and remember x and y are positive integer solutions integer that's whole numbers so when y is 7 x does not exist so i'm going to write here it's null when y is 7. So what about when y is 8? We do the same thing here again. You put 8 over. If you put 8 minus 5, you are going to have 8 minus 5 here is 3. And this will give us a fraction. So again, x does not exist when y is 8. So none here. What about when y is 9? What is x? So let's try it again. x is equal to 5 times 9 over 9 minus 5. What is 9 minus 5? 4. If you divide 9 by 4, you are going to get a fraction. So again, x does not exist when y is 9. Let's try 10, which is the last one here. So when y is equal to 10, x is equal to 5 times 10 over 10 minus 5. What is 10 minus 5? That's 5. If you divide 10 by 5, you will get 2. And 2 times 5 is 10. So when y is 10, x is also 10. Very good. So let's put everything together. 
So if I have to rewrite this, y is equal to 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And x is equal to 30. This is null, 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 and then 10 as well. The assumption that gave us this was when we said let x be greater than or equal to y. But what about if we say for y is greater than or equal to x, you don't need to resolve this whole thing. You can just switch the position of, of x and y. So we can just simply rewrite this as x is equal to. So I'm replacing y for x here. I'll say x is equal to what? 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Notice this is the condition when y is greater than or equal to x. So here we can say that y is equal to all of these values here. We are switching the value. So no, uh, 30 here, null here, null, null, and then 10. So it's time to put everything together. We can say x comma y is equal to when x is 6, y is 30, right? Good. And we can't use any of these ones because here, y is null. The same thing with this one here, x is null here. So we can't use any of those. We'll now use another one, which is what? When x is 30, y is 6. So when x is 30, y is 6. Finally, we have 10, 10, and 10, 10 here. So we can just say when x is 10, y is also 10. So we can answer that this is the positive integer solutions of x and y. I hope you found value from this video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel and like this video. And of course, share with your friends and family. I hope to see you in the next one. It's bye for now.